Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about TrueNAS. In this video specifically, we're gonna show virtualization, how you can create a virtual machine, how you can configure it and how you can use it. And now you're gonna ask Alan why I wanted to create a virtual machine in TrueNAS, and it's simple. Normally, if you have your TrueNAS, they're running 24 per 7 and that uh, the main reason is a pool data. But you don't need to choose it only as a pool. You can create different virtual machines for different applications. Let's say that you wanted to do a virtual machine that runs Windows or a virtual machine that uses Debian, Ubuntu for some applications with TrueNAS, you can do it. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to create any virtual machine, we need to start to explain a few configurations that you need to have or need to do before it happens. So, to understand a little bit more about it, we come in my screen. Here my screen, here's my true NAS, what is running the revision 24.10, I believe that at the moment that I'm recording this video, I have another update, but I'm not upgrade or update this system because basically work and don't need to do anything more. So make sure that you really run this through NAS in a physical computer, otherwise it will not run as you expect. I tried initially to do some tests in a virtual machine, but didn't run. So make sure that it's a physical computer. Here I have my E5 that is really old CPU, but uh, fit for my needs, they have four cores only, but because I'm not run so much applications, it's fine. What's really important is run memory. You need to have quite a lot of run memory because TrueNAS is really power hungry for it. So in this way, I have 16 gigabytes of run memory. In this way, I have nine gigabytes required for my system plus seven that will fit for any virtual machine, any other application, continue on. Here I have my pool, my storage, and here I have my network connection. Next thing that you need to have configured will be in the storage, what I have to have my pool created or my storage created. In this case, they advise me because I don't have redundancy storage. If this hard drive fail, basically all my data fail, I'm not worried about it because it's only a trial system. So either that it fail, uh, I don't care. But if you run for production, make sure that you fit at least these rules. You have RAID 5, three hard drives, or if you want to have only two, really have a mirror, not a strip, because in this way, make sure that your system is safe. Anyway, other thing that we need to have is this data set. If you saw my previous video where I set up the admin options, I show you why I create those and make different configurations. In this case, I need to have a VM storage. Not that I need to have, but it's better to have everything in one place and that's after I can set permissions there. Why permissions? In this case, I leave others. In this way, everyone have permission to access this folder, what's not interesting, but now I only did it because I want to copy some data there. The data that I want to copy, it's my SO. So if I come here in my TrueNAS data and come in VM, I have two SOs. One that is Windows, the other is Debian. In this case, I will pre-install or set up the configuration for Debian will be pretty much the same for Windows, but we're not gonna show how we can install those, only how we can set up this configuration. Have this one in mind, I have this VM, and here inside I have all my SOs. Other thing that I needed to have, it's my configuration for my graph card, my GPU. If I have a GPU, make sure that you configure it, and to configure it, you need to come here in System, Advanced Settings, and here at advanced settings, basically you have all your system configuration. If you have a USB connect for this, they will show what configuration, they will show all the information that you need to have, but what we are key to understand, it's exactly this, insulate GPU device. Here in insulate GPU device, they already appear my GPU that I have in this computer. If I have more than one, I need to add all that I need, and to add it, I need to come here in configuration, I can select the GPUs that I have, in this case, right select, I will put save, and once that they save, they will ask me to restart computer. If I don't restart my system, they will not allow me to connect my VM to this system. You're gonna have some information that you need to know when you create the VM using the GPU, but we're gonna do it in a couple of minutes. So I have this one configured, now you can come here in virtualization. Here in my virtualization, I have one virtual machine, 
and this virtual machine is exactly this one. I know that when I ask Alan, if you give permission for this one, it means that someone can delete this virtual machine. No, because this one is great as a Zivon, and if I come here, I don't have access. Either that's exactly in the same folder, I cannot see it, because let's say it's a new layer, and this layer will have the permissions for this user, but the users not be able to see it unless they are in this main page for the TrueNAS. What it's advantageable, because no one can modify and delete things by mistake. Anyway, if I come here in virtualization again, now I can start to create my virtual machine. Here in the top of the right appear how much run memory available I have. Don't rely on this one. Make your self calculation the same way that I did before. In my case, I have seven gigabytes of, uh, let's say, free run memory. So if you run a little bit more, they will be really slow and will have problems. So to create, first thing, we're gonna select what's a kind of open system that I'm using. In my case, it will be Linux. If you're using Windows, make sure that you connect as a Windows. Now, we come here name. I will call as a Sauber Lab. So here, my system clock, if I look as local, they will use my local time. Let's say, if in Brazil, they will give the local time as Brazil plus three. If I put UTC, they will be zero time. So they will use, let's say, UK time as a zero, Greenwich time as a zero. So if I leave as a local, I can define the boot mode. This boot mode, I can use a legacy, BIOS or UFI. I prefer to use UFI because it's the update system. If you have any reason to leave as a legacy, you can choose it. But I suggest you leave as UFI for all the systems. Now I can select if I want to start as a boot or not. Don't worry, I can select it after. But in my case, I will not select it. Because if I restart my system, I want to make sure that I select the manual to start it, and that's if I stop the system, do not restart it without I need. Unless it's some kind of obligation that needs to run in the background, so then I will leave as a start on boot. Blind, if I leave 000, they will give access external for my TrueNAS. If I leave a 127, they will be only local. In my case, I want to access it external, so I will leave as a 000, and then I will still find the password. This password is really important for you to define for you have access for the console. Otherwise, once that you go in the console for this system, they will not allow you to access your VM. Now we'll put next, and here will be the configuration of a CPU. Different from RAM memory, CPU I can over -stipulate. Let's say I have only four cores, but I can define as eight cores. Remember, if you put too much, they will use more and that your system will be a little bit slow. So in my case, it will use only half of my capacity. Now I can select a Cosmo, or I can select as a pass-through. If I put pass-through, they will recognize that's exactly the same CPU that I have. If I want to make sure that it's a specific option, I can come here and select. In my case, I don't need any kind of application, so for me, pass-through will be enough and will work for me. Now, a little bit difference from the previous VM option for the TrueNAS for now. If I select this one, let's say 2GB, not necessarily they will allocate all time these two gigabytes of uh, run for my VM. It means that the maximum that I allow to choose is two gigabytes, but I can select the minimum. So 256 MB will be the minimum allocate, and if they need more resource, they will look up to two gigabytes. Remember, don't put more than that rule that I told before. In my case, maximum will be seven, because I don't want to overuse my RAM memory and that all my TrueNAS will not work as expect. If I wanted to do share folders or anything, if I use more, they will have problems. Anyway, once that I define here, I'll put next. Normally I use this option EHCI. If you have any reason to put virt OI, you can select, but this EHCI is totally fine. And now I'll select where is location of Zivol. As I define, will be a folder called VM, and here will be the location that will be all my files. Now I'll select at least 20 gigabytes. I could put more, I could, could put less, but they will pre-allocate this space for your virtual machine. So make sure that you don't put too much that will overcloud all your system, because they will be, that's a block 20 gigabytes that you're not gonna be able to access it after. So plan it in your mind. Now the next step, we're gonna select the network interface. If I want to be as a host, let's say on internal use, I select this. If I want to have external, I'll use virtual OS. Then I can select which card that I want. If I have more than one internet connection, I can select 
one to use for my VM, other to use for my application, continue on, so there will be a load balance. In my case, I have only one, so I cannot do this load balance, so we'll select the one that I have and put next. Now we'll select the media, we we'll have two options. In my case, I already copy all my media exactly in this folder called Home, VM, Data, and VMs. If you don't copy anything and now it's the time that you say, oh my gosh, I didn't have the ISO, you can upload it. You can select exactly where you want that this VM will be uploaded, choose the file, and that you upload it. In my case, I don't need, I only select my Debian and put next. Now the CPU. If you did that configuration that I showed before, you're gonna be able to select your CPU, but remember, once that you select the GPU for this VM, you're not gonna be able to select for other VM. So they will not share or balance your GPU, they will be dedicated GPU only for that specific VM. What it's good, if you want to run look like a machine that put a display IOSB and use as a machine, but it's not good if you want to use two or three VMs with the same GPU. Also, you want to use, let's say, Plex in your TrueNAS, they will not share it. So make sure that you only select this option if you really need to use the GPU for this virtual machine. In my case, I don't need, so I'll put next. They will give me all the information for me to review. If I'm happy, I can put yes. Don't worry, you will still be able to modify it. Not necessarily that once that you put save, it's frozen and you cannot do anything because if I open here and put edit, I have all the configuration that I have. I can increase my CPUs, I can increase my cores, I can increase my pass-throughs and other things. Also, if I come here in device, let's say that I want to use this virtual machine and put a display and I put a USB, I can always come here in add and I can select, let's say, USB pass-through, and that will be my USB card, let's say, my keyboard and mouse connect for that USB. Also, if I put a display, I can select what port, resolution of my display, and everything, in the, such a way that I can use a physical display to my TrueNAS, and I can use it to simulate a physical computer. Anyway, we're not gonna add it. We come here in virtual machines, and let's start this virtual machine. Difference for before, before if you come here in display, they will open the VCM display and now they will appear this option of uh, display. What, uh, in my opinion, is not so great. If I look in here, I can start to do all the installation, I can go for graphic interface. You can do the installation exactly the same way that you're gonna do for a normal computer, but I have a problem. This display, what problem that I have, it's if I start to move pages, do something here, let's say that I will start to look, download logs and do something else and come here, Sometimes these display work or don't work. Sometimes they recognize my keyboard and sometimes you don't recognize, you lose connection, then you need to close it and open again. The good thing that all the time that you open and close, you still keep the same page that was before, do not restart your system, not have other screen. They basically, you turn off the screen and turn on again the same page that was before. So in this way, now you can start to create your virtual machines. Once that you create and you're sure that you want to restart all the time, you can select this one for start on boot. So once that you do the schedule for restart or other things, they will automatically open it. Also, once that you configure everything, you can clone it for different copies, different revisions. And remember, at every time that you want to do any modification, you need to restart your system. Otherwise, you will not only modify it. And now, you have your virtual machines. So in this way, we're arriving at the end of the video. I hope that you guys like this video. If you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave your like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and see you next time.